speakers are coming. The speakers are coming. Okay, I know, I know. Speakers are not a new thing. Heck, the first speaker was invented in the late 1800s. So yes, they've been around for a while. But until now, design constraints with your standard speaker design, including size and weight, have really limited where they can be placed. But my friends, that's all going to change. Right about now. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Folks, we are talking about a brand new type of speaker technology today with Matt Reynolds from TDK. Matt is bringing us the goods on TDK's new Piezo Listen, a whole new kind of piezo speaker. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Matt and I take a closer look at the form factor and integration benefits that the Piezo Listen brings to the table and how the multi-layer technology of these ultra-small, ultra-thin speakers will bring integrated multimedia to a whole new range of applications. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about Piezo Listen from TDK. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, thanks for having me today. I'm happy to talk about our new product. So we're here to talk about your new Piezo speaker. But what's so different about this speaker? Well, the Piezo Listen speaker is a very thin speaker that allows its use in locations where speakers weren't conveniently located in the past. So this allows us to do new kinds of placement for speakers in automotive applications or uh, mobile devices. They can be used to actually actuate the screen in a mobile device as the speaker or in other applications such as mirrors or display devices, kitchen appliances, or flat TV screens. Why would I really want an ultra-thin speaker? Well, as I said, the big advantage of the Piezo Listen speaker is that it's so thin. And the way that it's applied is to the backside of some diaphragm. That diaphragm might be just a, a metal or a plastic cover, but it also could be something like an OLED display that could be used to move as the speaker. So this can enable you to use them in displays and also in places where you want to create a device that's waterproof or dustproof that has a very long lifetime. There's very little kind of moving parts. There's no moving parts and, and the motion of it is very minimal. So there isn't really any wear out mechanism like you might have in a standard speaker. And also because of the small size, it gives a lot of flexibility for the designer to locate the speaker in different kinds of places and enhance the user experience. I brought a couple demos to show actually today. There's one that we prepared just using a simple picture frame that we got at a craft store and glued a thin piece of acetate plastic into it and attached the piezo listen element to it just to give you an example of how simple of a speaker that you can make with this. And then to show an even more simplified version, we made a very quick demo using just a simple Dixie cup where we attached it to the bottom of the Dixie cup. And here's an example of that. Well, Matt, your name tag does say TDK. So are there specific things TDK can bring to the table here when making a speaker like this? Yeah, so TDK really has a long history of experience in ceramic materials and also 
processes for multi-layer type products. So some of our products that we have that are a large part of our portfolio are things like multi-layer ceramic chip capacitors or multi-layer inductors. We're also already doing some multi-layer piezo materials for inkjet print heads and some other applications like this. So we have a long history of expertise both in the piezoelectric ceramic materials and also in multi-layer ceramic processes. So if I want to use this piezo speaker in my next design, what kind of options are available for me? Well, currently we have four different sizes of piezo listen speakers, and they're all classified by basically their X and Y dimensions. The thickness is the same or nearly the same for all of them. They're all less than a millimeter thick, but they're all described by the length and width. So there's a 2010, which is 20 millimeters by 10 millimeters, a 3015, a 3030, and a 6630. And so those elements continually get larger. And the larger sizes apply into a broader spectrum of, of frequencies. So the large 66 by 30 millimeter device really can give a full range of frequencies from 100 kilohertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. Okay, but how does this compare to the electromagnetic speakers I already have? Is this going to be a whole bunch better? Yeah, so one of the best things about them is their physical size. Conventional electromagnetic speakers are quite deep. They have a cone shape and, and they're heavy. They use magnets. So the biggest advantages have to do with the space that's required for them and their weight. So this can make them very interesting in a lot of applications. Even things like automotive, you are talking about a very large car, but automotive is always looking for ways to make everything weigh less and improve fuel efficiency. So lighter speakers is definitely of interest for them. The frequency range is a little bit better, even to the low end of frequencies down to 1,000 hertz is very good for a tweeter. Output power is about the same. The power consumed is actually better than a conventional speaker. Also ease of integration. So it very simply attaches to the back of some surface of plastic metal, can be even wood or something like this with an adhesive. So that's very easy to integrate into new designs. So Matt, am I going to sacrifice audio quality to get these other advantages? No, we find that there really isn't isn't a large sacrifice or even any sacrifice in sound quality. There is a little bit of a reduction in some frequency ranges in dB for sound pressure level, but for the most part, you're going to get very comparable performance and still be getting all the benefits of size and weight that I mentioned previously. Okay, so what is this going to look like going forward? Where are we going to be seeing these speakers? Yeah, so initially we have some business already for entertainment electronics. So this would be in things like flat screen TVs and surround sound systems where people do have an interest to make these devices smaller and lighter and thinner in order to take up less space in your family room, for example. You don't want to have 20 speakers taking up a lot of space in your family room. But also it will be getting into mobile electronics, tablets and cell phones, things like this, or Bluetooth speakers, mobile Bluetooth speakers. And then a little bit further down the road in about 2022, we will have automotive approved devices that will find its way into the automotive industry for cockpit audio in vehicles. Well, Matt, this was super cool, but I think I've run out of time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. No problem. Thanks for coming today. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about Piezo Listen from TDK. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.